Hello, in this video we're going to look at deriving perfect complements utility functions. Example 1. Beth only consumes ice cream and pie together and will not substitute between them. She consumes pie and ice cream in equal amounts, namely one scoop of ice cream on top of one slice of pie. So what we want to first do is just calculate the ratio of scoops of ice cream and slices of pie, and in this case it's going to equal 1 one slice of pie for one scoop of ice cream. We can construct the ratio mathematically. Here I is ice cream and P is slices of pie. And given, from our, given the information from our word problem, this ratio is just one. In that case, if we were to solve this equation, I equals P, and that's what we're going to basically be putting in our perfect complements utility function. So the minimum here, the utility equals the minimum of these two numbers. And based on our ratio, we saw I equals P. So we're going to have I comma P. So now let's just evaluate our utility function at some values for I and P. So two scoops of ice cream and two slices of pie. Putting in those values, this consumer will get a utility of 2. All right, uh, example 2. A consumer always eats peanut butter sandwiches in the following fixed proportion. Two slices of bread to three ounces of peanut butter. So I'm going to construct the ratio. Slices of bread to peanut butter is two to three. We're going to solve this ratio now for S. So just multiplying everything through by P, we get this result where S is slices of bread and P ounces of peanut butter. We can verify this result is correct uh, by substituting some numbers in here. So if the consumer has three ounces of peanut butter, P, how many slices of bread does, it, does she need? So putting in three for P, she would need two slices of bread. And that's exactly how this word problem is written. So substitute some numbers in there to make sure this makes sense, and it does. So now constructing our utility function, our utility function, this perfect complement's utility function will take on this form here. We're going to have an S comma two-thirds P. We can, we can verify this. Let's put in two slices of bread and three ounces of peanut butter. Doing that, the minimum of these two numbers, so this two-thirds times three will just leave us two, and we'll get a utility of two. Okay, moving on. Example three, I like peanut butter and jelly and always use one ounce of jelly for every two ounces of peanut butter. So let's construct our ratio of jelly to peanut butter. This is gonna be one half, one over two. We're gonna solve this for J by multiplying through by P. And as you guessed from before, this is what's gonna be showing up in our utility function. Let's first verify. If I have two ounces of peanut butter, if P is two, how many ounces of jelly do I need? I would only need one ounce of jelly, and that is exactly consistent with what we have in our word problem. If I have two ounces of peanut butter, I should get back one ounce of jelly from our equation, and I do. So constructing our utility function, J, one half p oops let me get back j one half p we're done let me just show one more thing with this example same word problem one ounce of jelly for every two ounces of peanut butter so we get the ratio here again of those two goods uh, of one half and we solved it for J we could have also solved it for P okay so we could solve this for P and you'll get P equals 2 J and that's fine too so we could verify this P equals 2 J is uh, legitimate if I have one ounce of jelly how many ounces of peanut butter do I need given I want to consume in this fixed proportion 
plugging in one for J, you would need two ounces of peanut butter. So this too is consistent with our word problem. So, so in this case, we could have constructed our perfect complements utility function as 2J comma P, or as we did in our first way, J equals one half P. These are equivalent utility functions. Uh, the rank ordering of the baskets is going to be the same for both functions, uh, leading to the same utility maximizing solution for given income and prices. So either one of these is, is suitable. And we could have did the same thing, for example, for example two or example one. Well, example one didn't matter because it was one for one, but for example two, we could have did a similar thing, and that would have been a legitimate perfect complements utility function. All right, let's do example four. Uh, here, utility equals a minimum of 3x or y. And what is the fixed proportion that this consumer consumes good x and good y? So setting 3x equal to y, constructing our ratio of good x to good y, it's going to be one-third. So that's the fixed proportion that the consumer is consuming these uh, goods in. And in other words, the consumer uses one unit of X for every three units of Y. All right, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful.